San Francisco. I'll be back Friday, December 8th and Saturday, December 9th at Cobb's Comedy Club. It's the last stop of the Live and Alive tour for 2023. Get your tickets at ryansickler.com. Hey, everybody, I have a special announcement to make. Um, You may have heard me say this on my YMH episode, but I am starting a new podcast. It's going to be right here on this YouTube channel. It's called The Way Back. It drops Thursday, January 4th, and it will be a weekly pod every Thursday moving forward after that. All right. Um, It's a nostalgia podcast. It's a short one, too. It's a quick hitter. No more than 30 minute episodes with some of your favorite guests in comedy and podcasting. We already have a ton of them recorded. Uh, I'm very excited to do this. If you're a big fan of the Crab Feast, if you're a big fan of the Honeydew, I know you're going to be a big fan of this show. Um, It's just something I've always thought about, you know, and the set is the back seat of that old school station wagon facing traffic, looking that way. All right. It's the way back because we're sitting in the way back and we're looking back on things. And uh, here's a fun teaser just to get you excited about the idea. Check this out. It's the way back with Brian Sickler right here on my YouTube channel every Thursday beginning January 4th. There is some of those memories of childhood that are so fascinating. Mitch Bear gave us his favorite porno Because we would put M80s my, One of my in. older brothers used to fart in my yeah, mouth. I was like, I can't wear a this diaper. It's funny. I'll spray fire at my cousin. I, mean, I got puked on And her boob popped Broken out. Broken feet. Someone's going to die. Coke, ecstasy, like everything. You used to call it the I chastiser. I did not feel <laughs> safe. <laughs> Holy. Yeah, those were the days. Dude, that was a fun trip down memory lane. The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler. Welcome back to The Honeydew, y'all. We are over here doing it in the Night Pan Studios. I am Ryan Sickler, ryansickler.com, Ryan Sickler on all your social media. And I'm going to start this episode like I start every episode by saying thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for watching, listening. Um, If you're new here, if you've been here, I appreciate all of it. Make sure you subscribe, help out the show. Uh, And if you got to have more than I'm telling you, you got to check out the Patreon. It's called The Honeydew with Y'all. It's the same show with y'all. And there are hundreds of the wildest episodes you've ever heard in your life. It's five bucks a month, not just for the month. You get the entire library. All right. Go check it out. And if you got to have something else to listen to then you got to check out the crab feast all right it's my old podcast it's still thriving out there which blows me away so thank you feaster nation um i love seeing all the crab feast fans still rep the merch come to the shows and stuff it was a great podcast it's all the same comedians you know and love from podcasting with different stories it's free it's out there now go subscribe to it it's audio only it's a really fun podcast um and if i am in town when you're around Come see me on tour, closing out the year, Cobbs in San Francisco, December 8th and 9th. That's it. All right. That's the business. You guys know what we're doing over here. We're highlighting the low lights. I always say these are the stories behind the storytellers. And I'm very excited to have this guest on today. First time here on The Honeydew. Ladies mm-hmm. and gentlemen, Kevin Ryan. Welcome oh, to The Honeydew. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for making time oh, for us. I've been wanting to do it for years. Thanks for making time. And I've all I, I've been on your show twice now. Mm-hmm. I think we did a Zoom during the pandemic the first time. Yep. And I came to your beautiful fucking studio. Where thank I, you. Fresh off back surgery, stepped out of the bathroom and almost went right back into yeah, motherfucking you were back like, surgery. <laughs> You were like an old uncle that came in. <laughs> oh, watch that step out there. I was a liability for sure. I was a walking liability. It was brand new. The paint was still drying. I'm like, I don't think the fucking insurance policy is in effect yet. Sickler's going to jam us His up. His L2's fucking <laughs> fractured over it. Um, please, before we begin, mm-hmm. plug, promote everything and anything you would like. Uh, Are You Garbage podcast, wherever you get podcasts. Um, we're all over the road. The Stay Trashy tour. It's a mix of... Uh, uh, me and H Foley. It's a mix of stand up, and you know we play AYG with the crowd. We each co headline, and then we let the crowd ask their garbage questions. We shit on them for a half hour. It's a good freaking time. Hell yeah, yeah, that's good. So are you garbage.com for all live shows? Social media, social media at Kevin Ryan Comedy on Instagram, Twitter, and are you garbage on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok and everything? Boom. Yeah. 
Well, dude, I'm stoked to have you here. Thanks. This is real first 48 vibes, dude. I feel like I'm in a fucking interrogation. Do the, you? Dude, that, that door closes and the vibes change. <laughs> dude, it's good. It's good. But you're like, we're out there all laughing. I'm in here. I'm like, oh, man, they got me. They got. They know something. I don't know. It was know. like the box <laughs> yeah. over here, bro. I picture one of the producers <laughs> just <laughs> picks up a Diet Coke can that I was drinking <laughs> earlier with a pen. And he's like, we got him. That's it. We got the bald one. I, this is this is where it ends, dude. This is this is where you get me. You're not shit hasn't gone well if you're on this show. Okay, shit has not gone well sure. in your life if you're doing this show. Sure, um, dude. First of all, I want to talk to you about because I, I want to know about where you're from. Mm -hmm. you, before we were just talking, your last name's Ryan. I said, "What is that, Irish?" You said, "Yeah," but then you said, "Your mom." My mom's a Sullivan, and Sullivan. my stepdad's a Kelly. So Which it's is, like. I dirty shanty Irish Catholic trash through and through. And where are you from here in the states? From uh, Philadelphia originally. Okay. Mom's whole mom and dad's whole family there. Out of like the hundred and fifty people that are my aunts, uncles, and cousins, a handful have all moved out for work or like the military or something, but everybody's come back. Like I, when I moved to New York, people are like, we well, are going all the way to New York. It's 90, all the way. You it's, 90, it's 90 <laughs> minutes, dude. It's 90 <laughs> minutes. And like my mom had been to New York like two times. And now it's only been like, since I've been up there for a decade, she's come up twice. It's like, we just don't, it's a very blue collar working family, head down, drink a lot on the weekends and then weekdays. And you know, at, tends to become a problem for a lot of people. But uh, we were living in Philadelphia. And then my dad was uh, construction. It's all blue collar, right? Mm -hmm. There's a couple teachers, some cops, fire. It's like fucking Angela's ashes, dude. It's like, right. <laughs> it's, as, it's, as, it's, as, it's as stereotypical Irish Catholic trash as you can get, dude. It's fucking... <laughs> there's, a couple, there's a couple really smart people, but even then, like, I got a cousin. He's so smart. And he's like covered in tattoos. Like, it's like even the smart ones are still got Making dirt on dumb their, choices. Yeah. Dude, like, yeah. He's <laughs> yeah. got like all of his kids' names tattooed yeah. on his hands. And he, you're like, what are you doing? But, um, so it's like even that. And so we, my dad was, uh, steam fitter like a HVAC guy, worked his way through. It's all union. Con everybody's a union contractor. So, like, worked his way through the union and started his own company, made a couple of bucks because my mom was one of nine. Her dad was a cop and like there was like 11 people living in like a two bedroom house in Kensington, Philadelphia. Kensington is now that neighborhood that you see where like all the crap, all the dope fiends are out on the street. Yeah, it's like open air drug where, market. Yeah, that's where my that's where the origin story of, of Kevin that's Ryan where the Ryan started. That's where it started, dude. That's my whole family is from Kensington. Like that's it. It's like it's it's that that is. And there's so many of us and so many, we have a guy, somebody, you need construction, you need a car, you need this, you need tickets to an event, you need parking down there. We know a cop, we call up, you know, call up Steve Gallagher, he'll park you right mm -hmm. around the back with the whatever. And like my cousin says, we're like the Kennedys without the money. Like there's, yeah. you know, and there's a hundred of us, some died in a bad accident somewhere along the way. But um, so my dad made a couple of bucks and moved out like from the inner city to like still in the city but on the outskirts a little bit and then made a little bit more money and got us into the suburbs okay i guess when i was like three or four or so and then uh he was just not great with money it's like you know he started doing the business started doing well and i don't know i guess he's never ran a business so it's like there was huge influxes of money that he was like this is my money and you're like no that's that's got to go to pay for the materials <laughs> yeah, and the yeah. stuff. You know what I mean? So like he would get new cars and then like a, a, a house up the mountains. And then like that was getting sold two years later. And then like the cars were getting repoed in the middle of the night. Like that real new money shit. Like no idea how to handle it. And they got divorced when I think I was, I don't even remember. The first, the only memory I have of them together is them telling me they're getting a divorce. Nah. -uh. Yeah, it's the only memory. <laughs> on, dude. I the swear to God. The only memory you have of your parents together is them Them's, sitting you down uh -huh. to tell you they're getting it's divorced. It's over. It's a wrap. We did it. We did, We tried the best we could do. That's the only thing I got, dude. <laughs> I swear to God. Nobody believed because that's like out of a movie. Like. <laughs> That's, that's it. Terrible. That's it, dude. That's it. And I remember they like sat me down and I'm like real squirrely and kind of cold emotionally. It's I keep it all in. No wonder it's why. <laughs> <laughs> just, just 
kid had a rough start. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah. You're fucking sliding in with your big wheel, and they're like, "Listen, kid, it's a wrap on this shit." Yeah. God, dude, it was. They sat me down, and I remember being like, "We got to talk to Where, you." Were you in a restaurant? Were you no, at home? No, Where we were, were you? Did we they were... get you to McDonald's and try to help? No, you? no. And they wanted. I have an older brother and an older sister, <laughs> and they wanted to separate us because i i didn't really have an understanding of it if i you know i think i was four or whatever that it was <laughs> we divide and conquer bro yeah they were like yeah. well let's get him out of the way because he's not going to understand it oh god you were first do you know i that? was first you yeah so i well then i i i called setup i knew so i was like why the fuck aren't they here mm -hmm. i said go i want to talk to i was like we don't this isn't right you don't sit me down both of you Something's and how, how up. old are you? Because you're about four when you I'm get to the suburbs. I'm four when we moved to the suburbs. It's right, it was right away. Oh, was they like built their dream house. I all built all, you know, like the, the theory of like, oh, Dude, we're going to live my, together. This sounds like my fucking family. The, yeah. the business is my prosperous. Favorite, my favorite house. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And like my mom's still in that house. Like she kept that okay. house. Um, I, as a testament to her as a single mom, she was like, I'm not my kids because we were in such a good school district. She's like, I'm not giving up this house. Like. I learned the t I learned the term house poor when we when I was like seven. I'm like, can we get this? She's like, honey, we're house poor. Like, all the money goes to keeping you in this house and keeping you in this school, so we don't have to go back to the open air drug market. Like right. That. Yeah. Um. So they were telling me, and I call. I felt the vibes weren't good, and I was like, why aren't Danny and Sarah here? And my mom's like, oh, we want to talk to you. I'm like, no, nah, go get like. So my dad's like, all right, just fucking. Oh really? Just you go demanded get them. Yeah. it was. Oh, I was like, "This oh, is yeah, too good weird for you." What, what do we do? We've never That's done this before. To be able to do that, too. yeah. So they brought them down, and they reacted horribly because they were like eight and nine or something like that. So they were like devastated. My sister's like hitting my dad. You know, it's like they reacted how it normal, and I was just like, it didn't. I'm like, I don't fucking care. And then my dad was like, "Does anybody want to come with me today?" And I was like, what, the, what are you, nuts? What's that mean? Like, I don't know. I don't know. I guess where, like. Where are you going? You're right now you're going? Yeah. He's like, he was leaving. And he's like, I guess he had already moved. I don't know. I don't really remember. But he was like, does anybody want to come with me today? And we were like, I was like, dude, get the. You're going to bring me out of this fucking dope ass house with all my toys and shit. Like to go live in a fucking motel room for three weeks. I'm like, nah. no way, dude. I'm like, we're staying here. Um, also, it's interesting that as young as you guys are, your parents didn't make that decision and say, you're going to stay with mom in this house. So you stay. he's like, sure. I, uh, <laughs> step forward if you want to come yeah, with dude, me. It was real like, <laughs> who's going? Who's going to make a move? Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? I was like, I ain't fucking going nowhere, dude. This the freezer's full of nuggets in here. I don't know where the fuck you're taking me, but we got it pretty Different made. Different kind in the, of nuggets from yeah. Kensington, you know what I'm saying? Like, Different we got kind a, of nugs out we got of the it supper. pretty made in the shade in this cushy ass big house yeah. in the burbs. Um... So then, yeah, and they, they they kept it together surface level. Do you know the reason they divorced? Was it just they didn't get along, or was there some uh, shit going on? You don't have to share. Yeah, it. yeah, I don't like. I tend to protect the innocent in a lot Fair of. Fair enough. That's when I was like going over. I'm like, what story is going to tell? I'm like, well, that kind of fucking throws that guy under the bus. That throws her under the bus. That ain't great. Um, but I honestly don't truly know all of the details, and that's like another thing about uh my family is like. It's a don't ask, don't tell, you know, fucking repress, keep your head down, just keep fucking, you got to get up and go to work. That's yeah. the only thing, work, go work, go work. It's work, it's work, and then drink beers at happy hour. That's all my family did for a long time. And now as we get older and like my brother, my sister, myself get a little more, you know, are more emotionally intelligent and stuff like that. We are having really good conversations with my mom that like I never had in the past. Okay. It was like, um, so that's great. Um, so your dad leaves. Nobody goes with him. Nobody goes with him. And then what's your relationship with him like from that point? It was is it really still good. Does it he was, stay close? He stays close. He stayed like ten minutes away. Okay. Maybe like like he was in the area. And did the, you go to his place and stuff from time to time? Yeah, they had it split. Where like I I I you know I have to give to him. He was just like you're not. I'm not not seeing my kids. And he was great in my life all the time. So it was like Monday, Tuesday was with my mom. Wednesday, Thursday was with my dad. Mm -hmm. And then Friday, Saturday, Sunday would flip-flop every week. Bro, that's that was two, great. That's the two, two, three I have with my daughter right now. <laughs> you ready? Yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. I have right now it's with great, my daughter's man. mother, my two, two, three schedule. I, yeah. I re it didn't okay, good. shake me really good. at all. It was close. It and was she's easy. known that from even before, she's one when we split. So mm -hmm. she didn't have to be like, hey, call everybody in for this fucking bullshit mm -hmm. meeting. Yeah, she's, it's not, 
not it's what she's known. It's just what she knows. Yeah. And it's also at the same time, like like I said, I didn't know them together. Right. So like my only my first memory of them is going, This is what we're doing. And right. Like, he wasn't really around a whole lot at the time anyway. They were like what would your mom do for a living? My mom was retired. Like there was like an influx of cash. I think like on paper. <laughs> you at said that retired time. In, in my mind. He retired. Your, dad, your dad's dating like a sixty-eight year old. <laughs> <laughs> she had me old at uh, forty. No, so she was she was just a house like a, a housewife. You know what I mean? Uh, and he he like sold the construction. Con- I, it's all hairy and. No one at this point now. When I start asking questions a decade later, two listen. When I later, heard you say he was in construction, we knew it was shady already. Yeah, okay. We so knew there was, was like, some shady biz going on. It there. was like I think he had retires. Like I'm just going to do this on the side. Like I have enough money coming in for the next like ten years. I think there was like some sort of buyout structure or something mm-hmm. like that. I don't really know, but um, that when they got divorced, that all went belly up, and I think the company that he was with kind of went belly up as well. So we had to like go. We had to start over at you know, in his thirties again with three kids divorced. And my mom had to go back to work. My mom worked as a, a lab tech in hospitals and she worked third shift. So like she would leave at three and get back at like midnight or 1am or whatever. Uh, so we were like raised, it was my brother, myself and my sister in that house. Like, I mean, you know, fighting and fucking, there was no, I was, I, I feel like I've been on my own since six. Like it was just like, Go, my brother's like, I'm going out with my friends. I'm in the house. I'm skateboarding out. I'm doing so. I felt like I was just, there was very little oversight looking back. Yeah. Um, And my dad, like the blue collarness, and like I have it now where it's like, I don't want that to become my life of like, they live to work. They live to work. And like I watched it drive them crazy. I watched like they live and die by what happened that day. And like there's no separation of life. Like there was no like big vacations or anything. It was like, we would go down the Jersey shore. That's where every dirt bag from Philly goes. You yeah. Get down. Maryland is ocean Same city. Thing. Yes. We would, but you're going for a week. We would or go a few days. You're a, not going, you're not day tripping at least like you do uh Pacific ocean. Here. No, That's, no, no. You're going, we would go get a motel. Yeah. It would be my mom and my aunt, uh, my mom and my aunt who was also divorced or remarried. Um, we'd get one motel room for fucking 12 of us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and two two beds, two beds, two double fifteen bed. kids. Yeah, fucking, yeah. you know what I mean? They'd give you, there'd be fifteen kids. They give us like twenty bucks, and they go go on the boardwalk for seven hours. Mm-hmm. Like feed. I was the youngest. They were like, make sure he's fed. Don't get any fist fights. Like p- protect him. If he come, if you don't come back with him, do not come back at all. Type yeah. thing. Um. So, but even then, like we would go down for like two or three days. My dad be like, I got to go back to work. Like he would drive up and drive, and I'm like, just fucking. It was, it consumed a small bit, like, it consumed the family as, like, same, and then my same thing with my stepdad when my mom got remarried, construction worker, con- owned his own construction company, consumed the family. I guess my mom has a type now I that I say it out loud. Bro, had <laughs> she likes real the guy who Ir- Irish or- construction workers. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, wait, when, uh, how long for your mom gets remarried? I don't know, man. Um, like, how old are you when you remember him coming around? Young. Maybe, like, three years. Like, she didn't. Okay. You know, there was nobody. And then this is the only she met this guy. Like, there was no, like, dating. There was no, like, you know, revolving door of dudes coming in. Uh, it was just him. And he was great. He was really good. But, like, also very same thing. Like, Irish Catholic construction worker, drink and smoke and family. That it's like, there's no real emotional expression at all mm-hmm. like for the longest time I, we were referred to as denise's kids <laughs> <laughs> <That's terrible. laughs> for like 20 years 20, 20 years dude. you're an adult we were denise's kids you're a grown i'd be sitting there smoking cigs with them <laughs> denise's kids are over there voting right now <laughs> dude, i'd be 26 i'd come home from new york i'm trying to be a comedian and when i'd be like having a cig and like a guy for he knew was like oh this is denise's kid you know, wow. Denise's youngest. That's what it was. Youngest. So it was very like him. Never Kevin. This it would be. This is Kevin Denise's youngest. I you know all, what I mean? Like I always I, came. I, yeah. yeah, it was always preface. Was this motherfucker ain't mine? <laughs> <laughs> I don't fucking know him. I ain't never met this guy. Listen, if he fucks up, talk to Denise. <laughs> talk to Denise. Talk to Denise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he was very loving, and but like not. It was just didn't couldn't express it type thing. You know what I mean? It was always there for us. 
if we needed. Did your dad and your stepdad get along? In the sense of let's keep it copacetic for the kids. You know what I mean? Like that professional. professional. It's a professional That's thing. That's what I call it. And also like. Did your dad and mom a little more than professional or professional? Professional. Okay. It was professional. Yeah. It was, you know, I'm sure they had fights. Not, but not in, front in front of, of us. You guys. Yeah, yeah, it was never the, the drop offs were always whatever. It was fine. Or like they would come to games, you know, if there was like some sort of bigger game or something. Um, I was always I give them that it was never in front of us ever. Uh, and they would do like a good tag team if need be. If like myself or my brother or my sister were acting up, it was like we they were a united front in the parenting. Uh, and my dad, my dad was great. He was like, you know, he, again, like when he wasn't working, it was like very he was there or at least around. You know, he was he was very engaged. Did he remarry? He remarried and then got re divorced. So I have two younger brothers with him that I'm um, 10 years older and 16 okay. years older. Wow. And then my right. sister's like 16 years older and 21 years older than my two half brothers. Got it. So it was, but like my sister at that point was already out of the house and it was really just me. Like they were in college or working or whatever. So it was really just me. I was in high school or whatever when they were born. Um, But like he was good. My dad, my dad was great. Like never, you know, we never wanted for anything. He was always there. It was he was very supportive of a lot of stuff. But then as we got older, when we were in like business together, like wait, you went into business with your dad? Yeah. <laughs> After wow. he had already broken up his family with this. Like he he was working with his four brothers. None of them talk anymore. And then and then he came to my brother. He's like, I'm gonna go right to my like, immediate. Kid. My kids got it. You know what I mean? So like it was me, my dad, and my brother, and that was And it like, was a construction business? Construction, tight money, like, you know, trying what are you to guys cover doing? payroll. Are you doing like Buildings? Are you doing yeah. decks? Are no, you doing it was, uh, what are you doing? It was commercial, uh, okay, commercial. mechanical contracting. Okay. So like heating, air conditioning, plumbing, and stuff like that for like you know. And is it the Ryan? Is it Denise's sons? <laughs> 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 Denise's boys. <laughs> Denise's boys. Yeah, that's what he called us. These are Denise's boys. Man, that's a go. That's my first album, Denise's boy. <laughs> I just made my special lefty yeah, son. That's dude, true. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, why. yeah. <laughs> Denise's boys, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, that's when it got bad. It got bad between me and my brother. It got bad between my brother and my dad, me and my dad. And that's kind of when it all fell apart. Um, other than that, it was. What were the issues like? Stress. Who's in charge? Who's, you know, it's like you got three fucking lunatics in a room in an office this big. And there's the money's tight and you're like, what the, you know, everybody's screaming and hooting and hollering. That goes back to like, you asked if me and Foley fight and we do. Mm -hmm. And like, we were, we were talking like, I express myself by yelling at somebody and I don't necessarily mean it, but I'm like, there's emotion. I got to get it out. Let's yell at each other for 20 minutes until we go. Oh, okay. I gotcha. So that's, it was that, but it's yeah. very, when volatile. my brother says, Hey, fuck face. I don't walk away and be like, you're not going to talk to me like that. I turn around. Yeah. I, that's oh, he, like, I'm what like, the fuck? Oh, he's got something he wants to say. Yeah. To yeah, yeah. So it's, <laughs> yeah, that's where yeah. it's very like, hey, uh, fuck face. listen, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah. well, I'm listening. I'm like, right, Hey, you got I'm my attention. I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh it was very that man and it still is i had so like and my mom was like listen i've seen this business ruin families like two of them two, multiple families <laughs> two in of our, them right here under her in our room. circle you know what i mean <laughs> she's like i do not want fuck and I, this is a testament to my how great my mom is she's like i do not want fucking thanksgiving to be weird between you, you my two sons and she's like do not and I was I was the second one in. My brother had already been doing it, so I was like, "I'll st I'll bow out if I feel like this is getting too not if it's going to change how we are in the future." Um, and then like we ended up fist fighting a couple times, me and my brother you as did? adults, as, as adults. business, as business, <laughs> as, as coworkers. Denise's boys are fighting. <laughs> God damn, Denise's boys suck. Can't take them nowhere. Fighting at the <laughs> fighting at the goddamn hole. We're waiting on three forklifts. These guys are over here fighting. Can we we're just sign the contract? We're fighting in the parking lot. 
Who's got the paycheck? <laughs> We're fucking fist fighting. <laughs> just beating each other. <laughs> so how did it... When's the first time it came to blows? What happened? I mean, it did all... Obviously, all through childhood. Yeah, Because right? I'm bigger. I've always... I was always bigger. Even though you're younger, you've been bigger. He, we, we were like... I was a bigger kid. I was a fatter, bigger kid. So, like, we were the same weight. And, you know... Mm-hmm. And I'm a... I, you know, as a comedian, it's like, I'm a sharp-tongued, I can fucking... I know what hurts you, and I'll get there quick type thing. And he's got a itchier trigger finger than I have. So it was like, he'd say something, I'd snipe him once or twice. He'd get, you know, in his, yeah, he'd be like, who the fuck are you talking to? I'm like, I'm not fucking afraid of you. And then we, you know, so it happened. We were also drinking a lot together. It was like, he was, I was like, I was probably like 23 or 24. He was like 27. We had like the same group of friends. We're hanging out with our cousins. So like we'd work. There was no separation of church and state at that point. It was like, all right, hey, we're leaving work. We're gonna go shower. We're gonna meet everybody out to go drinking and it's like you know when you're that young and dumb and you're adding booze that much alcohol to it and tensions are high it'll just just spilled over at some irish pub in philly for the irish pub we are such fucking dirtbags <laughs> is that really where it, it was? was it was called <laughs> the irish pub <laughs> <laughs> Dude, i'm just putting this together now we are such <laughs> irish trash all right, Denise's boys are at it again. They're we at got- the Irish pub. Which one? The Irish pub. That's the name. It's not even like fucking, you know, McGrady's Irish yeah. pub. It's just the Irish pub. Yeah. Oh, God. Man, generational Irish trash. <laughs> it's just losing your shit on each other. Oh, yeah. just yeah. Uh, And it's like, I don't even know what set it off. Right, it, was, yeah. Yeah, it was probably like I called him a pussy because he didn't do a shot of you know, mm-hmm. Jameson or something. So then it just got heated. I also wanted to get more into comedy. I, I had just started doing comedy. So I'm like, all right, I want to get into it a little bit more. Um, so I uh, I was like, I'm I'm, I'm bowing out. That This was the last one. I'm, you know, what, what do we do? We got three fist fights in two months. Like, yeah. this ain't, this ain't great. So I bowed out and, you know, it kind of jolted our relationship a little bit because it was like, you know, uh, it wasn't, it was abrupt and like we didn't see it ending that way like we you always think you're the exception of the rule you're like well my dad and his brother's fault my stepdad and his brother's fault my uncle's fault it's us. not gonna happen to us and then sure as shit a year later we're like hey, we didn't even stay we didn't even make it a year dude you know what i mean um so that hindered our relationship a little bit just like we weren't as close we also weren't working together we weren't hanging out as much i was really focused on comedy at the time um so uh, so he's just left with your dad now so he's just left with my dad so and they then, don't dissolve the business they're gonna keep running they're gonna keep going so now it's, it's been Denise's working so boy. well it's just it's, Denise's it's, boy it's, now they cross the s off yeah. the fucking off the vans <laughs> i mean y'all had vans that's big time yeah, I had some van. we had a do we had a fucking this that's big time. we had this green dodge ram 2500 or something with jacked up we bought it a used the extended auction. one the extended, extended cat. that's the kind we used to use for like wrestling they would take like two of those and yeah we would t- take us around blue ones mm-hmm. like ymca camp vans yeah yeah, yeah 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 but this was like the this was the pickup version this is a huge pickup version we called it the green monster and this thing was in the shop <laughs> Every three hours, dude. It was like you had to, and we would put such an illegal size load of whatever we were putting on it. It was like if it wasn't hanging six feet off the back of that bed, we weren't even trying. Yeah, you know what, what are I mean? You doing? Dude, what what are you're, you you're doing? not even working. Why'd you even get? <laughs> why'd you put your boots on? Trips. <laughs> we ain't taking two trips. That's for damn sure. <laughs> That's the right. niece's boy's motto. That's the motto. And the famous last words. <laughs> we ain't, we ain't making two trips. <laughs> we ain't coming back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> That and the famous last words of Denise's Boys Construction Company was shaking something on the back of the truck and going, that ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Next thing you know, you're on 95 South, fucking running down the shoulder. Uh, <laughs> Dude, that happened to me. Oh, uh, you make, yeah, of course you give me did. a flashback right now, so... <laughs> We used to go crabbing with my dad. I love crab. We just did it a oh, couple weeks ago the in the best. Jersey Shore. I love crab. We used to go crabbing and we made our own trot line. We had a 100 yard trot line mm-hmm. that we would run and we had a nice uh, bass boat, little John boat, sure. aluminum. And we would take, uh, we'd go to the Y River in Maryland, W Y E, the Y River. And we dropped the bullips and it's all bullips we're using for bait. We mm-hmm. drop it in, we crab all day. But my dad had made this rig that a friend of him, a friend of his showed him where. You take out the where the the eye holes for the oars. You put like a two by four across, 
with bolts that go in, so they go in. Sure. And then you have um, a, a, a spool, mm -hmm. a rope spool at the end, and that's when you just pick it up, and as you move through, it gently comes up and down, sure. right? So we're driving home. We're, you know, it's an early day. You're getting up at like four in the morning. You're getting down there. Sure. It's an hour and a half drive. You want to get right on the water when the sun's up. And <laughs> we're driving home and I'm sleeping in the back seat. And I hear my dad, holy shit. Oh my God, Ryan. And just, I have two brothers. Ryan. Ryan. Yeah. Ryan. I go, what the fuck? He goes, the whole two by four thing flew up out of the boat. <laughs> it's all over the highway. Go get Go it. Get I it. said, what are you talking uh -huh. about? Go get it. It's, it's Interstate 50. Yeah, the car is shaking. Oh, oh man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, huh. and you're like, He's like, be careful. He's just up there to go, be careful. <laughs> he ain't coming out to help. No <laughs> one's coming. And I'm out there dragging all the piece. Uh -huh. The whole thing's being run over and shattered. I was like, holy fuck, dude. Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> it's... We towed our boat with a 1979 oh, yeah. Dodge Aspen station wagon, Jesus. bro. We towed our boat with a station wagon. Limited edition. <laughs> tinted windows, dude, wood panel, Dude, bro. if you're launching a boat with tinted windows and a station wagon, <laughs> you're having a good day. P.S. This is for your are you garbage, people. <laughs> that same station wagon was one of my cousin's wedding limos. Oh, my God. <laughs> You can't that make was it her up. wedding limo. They pulled, and then when we turned sixteen, my dad's like, "I'll buy that fucking thing. Let these <laughs> let these boys drive let a big old station wagon around and get great. used to it." Yeah, damn, so funny, huh. dude. Ever have an early meeting fall on a Monday morning? If you have, then you know that some things just don't mix. Like oil and water, our bodies don't absorb CBD oil well. So when you reach for oil based CBD products, you could be absorbing as low as six percent of what's on the label. Next Evo Naturals developed a proprietary water-soluble form of CBD clinically tested multiple times, which has proven to work faster and absorb four times better. So you can stay calmer or sleep better during this stressful time of year. I've noticed that after a long day of working at the studio or even traveling on tour, Next Evo CBD is great for helping me relax and unwind quicker. It's not well known, but CBD isn't actually an oil, but other companies often dissolve it in oil because it's a cheap and easy way to make products like tinctures and gummies. Don't waste your time with oil-based CBD that might not work. Upgrade to better natural solutions from Next Evo. Go to nextevo.com and use promo code HONEYDEW to get 25% off. That's 25% off at nextevo.com, promo code HONEYDEW. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Whether or not your family gives gifts during the holidays, you get to define how you give to yourself. And the holidays are a great time to do that. So whether it's by starting therapy, going easier on yourself during the tough moments, or treating yourself to a day of complete rest, remember to give yourself some love this holiday season. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. You know, we always talk about therapy here being positive. We talk about it you know, working out your body and working out your mind. So if you're even thinking about it, I'm telling you, it's a good thing to do. All right. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapist anytime for no additional charge. In the season of giving, give yourself what you need with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Honeydew today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Honeydew. If I asked you how many subscriptions you have, would you be able to list all of them and how much you're paying? If you would have asked me this question before I started using Rocket Money, I would have said yes. But let me tell you, I would have been dead wrong. I couldn't believe how many I had that I wasn't even using. Some I hadn't touched for months. It's just money out the window. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills. I can see all my subscriptions in one place, and if I see something I don't want, I can cancel it with a tap. I never have to get on the phone with customer service, and that is the best part. They'll even try to get you a refund for the last couple of months of wasting money and negotiate to lower your bills for you by up to 20%. 
All you have to do is take a picture of your bill and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over 500 million in canceled subscriptions. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash honeydew. That's rocketmoney.com slash honeydew. Rocketmoney.com slash honeydew. Now, let's get back to the do. All um, right, so yeah. so brother uh, Denise's very close son. With. We're all very close, except my, my, then my that. So Denise's son, Denise's boy, is now working with is his now dad. working with with dad. That goes south shortly after. I can imagine maybe a year, and even then, and like I'm in the middle of it because it's like they're not talking to each other. But, but is I'm, he is your brother starting to lean more toward you now? Like man, is opening he, back up? Are you repairing your relationship? We were ne- it was never bad. It just wasn't what it was. We were so close. This is what I love about. Especially Irish families. Sure. You say it was never bad. You had three fist fights. That ain't bad bu- where I come <laughs> from. Come what are we from? doing? In a year. In a-, <laughs> a year. In a year. Not in your lifetime. In a year. It was a rough year. Quarterly. We were, we were fixing yeah. a quarterly fist fight. We were fixing a recession. <laughs> Copper prices were through the roof. Margins Those were low. Those junkies down in Kensington are <laughs> robbing us blind. God damn. Can't keep it on a truck. Oh, God. That ain't going nowhere ain't until a fam- crackhead fucking pulls it all Famous off. Famous last words, man. <laughs> oh, God damn. And you never feel more confident when you have a cig in your mouth and you're shaking. And I ain't going yeah, nowhere. Hop fun. in. We're good. Uh, <laughs> so that it goes south with them. And I was trying to oh, mediate it a little bit, you know. Um, and uh, it didn't. It didn't work. Then they, that was the last. I was on the phone with my dad trying to figure it out. And it's also like you call me in to be the mediator, the guy, <laughs> you know, the guy who's already, you know, escorted off the property. Three you know what I mean? Assaults. <laughs> um, and that didn't. You know who we should call? Yeah, call Kevin that, up here, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kevin's, Kevin's got a real level. Who's head. Kevin? It's one of the nieces' boys, boys, the youngest up. one. Yeah, well, the, get nieces' youngest boy. Um, <sighs> but I do, I do have a thing that like me and my brother are closer because of that exchange. Like, I, I guess that's the only way we know how to, we knew how to do it at the time. We're way better, but it's like, that's just, yeah, that's what you grow up knowing and how everything is dealt with. And it's it what you, yeah, and like, that's why I'm terrible at arguing and I've tried to get better okay. at it. I can't get it. I can't come out of the gate with like, shut the fuck up know, and listen to me. Cause brutal. that's not going to let people it's, listen. Uh, yeah. Nobody listens. Yeah, no nobody listens. listens. You've immediately <laughs> offended everybody in the room. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but, uh, so then, yeah, and then that was honestly the last conversation I had with my dad was on the phone. Really? And that was in fucking, what year is it now, man? That was probably. Yeah, it was probably 2013. Yeah. So you haven't communicated at all in 10 years? I saw him at a Wawa not too long ago. (laughs) (laughs) That is so fucking pencil. And I fucking iced him. We walked. Yeah, we walked right by each other. uh, He saw you. He's crazy. Yeah. And we were like, I was like, I was like, you want to say your name? No. Just fucking. I was like, you want to? I was like, let's see who's. It was a game of chicken. I'm like, let's see who crazy. How? What was your? When did you realize he was in there? When you were? Did you see him? I was walking out and I saw him getting out of the car. Of the Wawa. And you walk right and by And I was him. just like, well, let's see, you know. I, you know, I was nervous. Like, I'd, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't like, oh, my God. Like, obviously, yeah, it's your father. You, you know, anybody that close to you for your whole life. And a charge of emotions comes up. And you know, I'm like, what do I do? Do I hug? I want to just, honestly, at the bottom, I just want to just fucking hug him and be like, I love you. You're my dad. But um, we're hard-headed Irish yaks. So yeah, it's like, but also like so many of us have had to be the parents in our relationship. Of course, yeah. And like that's a moment right there where a parent should just be like, I don't give a fuck if you're a grown man. You like, would let's think. Yeah. Put this aside. Mm-hmm. Like let me go get my fucking sa- MTO yeah. sandwich real quick. I'm uh-huh. gonna go get my Wawa sandwich. Get my coffee and then we'll fucking, we'll have a and then we'll have and a talk. look yeah. at the truck or whatever. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. But that didn't, you know, that didn't happen and uh, I talked to my mom about, I tried. Was a uh, year ago you said? This is maybe two years ago. Two years ago. And um, he never texted or tried to reach out after that? Like, hey, man. Not after that, no. There was one call of in the middle where I was like, you know, I kind of found out who I was. Like, you know, I was just realizing who I was as a person, as a man, probably around like, you know, early 30, mid, late 20s or whatever. I was in New York 
I was work. Comedy was going like, okay. I was making headway at least of like, oh, I'm, you know, and I'm like, oh, I am who I am. And I started dating my now wife. And I was just like, you know, just trying to like make sense of who I am and everything. And I was like, you know what? I got to fucking, I think I texted him on Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. And then I think he called me. And uh, I was at work. I couldn't answer. And I called him back. And we spoke for like a couple of minutes. And it was very like, hey, when you're back, he's like, I hear you're in New York. You know, kind of just gave him like a rundown. So he's never seen or you don't know if he's ever seen you live. Um, I think he might have saw me live once when I was living before this. So like when I first started. But not since you. Oh, no. Blown no, up. Uh uh-uh, No, no. Or that you know of. No, I. You think he's the type of dude that would buy a ticket, slip in the back, watch, never say anything? I don't think so. I think he knows, like, when we go back to Philly, I think he knows that's, like, behind enemy lines. Like, my all my moms, like like I said, they're one of nine. I have, like, 35 first cousins just on that side. Jesus. So it's, like, they all come. And, like, yeah. everybody's, so we're so all so close. Everybody's so supportive. So, like, I think he, 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 my, he knows, like, my mom's going. And he doesn't talk to my brother or my sister. So it's, like, I think he knew, he would know it's, like. So it's not just you. He's not talking no, he don't to talk, he don't anyone. T- he talks to like three people left, I think. I don't even know. You know, I know he doesn't. He's got a rough, had a rough relationship with his brothers and friends. And How old is he now? Late 60s, probably. And do you know anything about him? You, you were sorry. I interrupted. No, yeah, you yeah. said after that interaction or non-interaction, you talked to your mom about and it. And she was like, listen, you know, she's like, I've been with this. You know, I've, I've been through the ringer with this, with him. You know, she's like, I think. I don't want you. I she's like, I'm so happy you talk to him. I just also, I don't want you to get hurt. Like, don't get your hopes up. She's like, I think you'll realize that relationship is what you make it. Like, not, don't wait for him to text. And like, she's like, if you're okay with you reaching out when you come home and you go get a beer with him or whatever, she's like, that's great. And I kind of did a test. I was like, you know what? I'm not going to, I'm not going to reach out. I'm going to see when he reaches out. And he never did. So I'm like, all right, you know, um, but yeah, it's tough. I don't know. I, we were so close and he was a great dad. It's like you did it. I'm like, I'm like, you fucking idiot. You did all the hard That's work. That's what I'm saying. You came you dumb that motherfucker. far. You, you spent all far. the money. You pay, helped pay for college. You fuck. He was there all the time. I can't say well, really one bad thing about him raising me then. But now I'm like, I don't, you know, it's running like, a business, running a business <laughs> with the boys. <laughs> With, with the nieces, <laughs> with the nieces, boys. It's not even his yeah. kids. Uh-huh. They're not even his kids. Yeah, in the in the joke, either his sons aren't <laughs> his sons. It's the nieces, boys. <laughs> All also, right, so tell me. Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, but in that, my stepdad's around. I was just was about like, to say, yeah. tell me about your relationship with your stepfather. So um, you meet him pretty young, pretty young, seven, eight, you know, something like that, and around there. I'm so bad. This show, like doing, are you garbage now? Has, has made me go back and look at my life through a different lens of, you know, what of all these things and hearing your and... stories and stuff like that. I'm like, oh shit! Like it's like it sparks all these synapses start going. Like I forgot about that. And I think I might have been like a sociopath as a kid. Like I'm not emotional. Like Foley, my co-host, is so emotional. It's like so. I could if I could do this and get back and all all of this and that. I'm like fucking serial killer. Like. It's in there, but I do. It's like it goes back to that thing of like, don't revel in the problem. Fucking put your head down, grab a six pack on the way home from work, and fucking on to the next day. There's a there's a job to be done. The the car has to move forward. That's type right. thing. Um, so it's like I remember my dad being like, "Yeah, we don't have time to like, yeah, we're at a funeral, whatever it is. We don't have to like fucking move on." And you're like, "Fuck," you know. Um, which now I'm like realizing there's a shit ton of fucked up emotions in me that I've never looked at over the past fucking 37 years. Welcome to the honey dude. Yeah, Kevin, man, it's tough. It's tough. I used to think I'm like my parents divorce never affected me once. And then I got in like a real serious relationship and I'm like, oh, it's like what well, my relationship now with my wife is my first like really true. She said, I need you to sit down. I got to tell you something. You're like, oh, fuck. I was like, this, yeah. Yeah, this ain't good. Um. But then I remember I was having a conversation with her. We were fighting about money. It was before the podcast took off. And God bless. We'll get back to my stuff that I said. But God bless her. She moved in from Germany. She's German. She moved from Germany to the U.S. to be with me. I had been no money. Oh, wow. No money. She moved there. She moved here. Three days later, I checked my debit card. And, like, I miscalculated my checks, my checking account statement. 
And I was like $2,800 in the hole, like due to fucking overdraft charges. Overdraft charges. ED Bank, don't fuck around. (laughs) It's their money and they want it now. (laughs) Call that motherfucker's J.G. Wentworth. (laughs) And I remember sitting there like I'm such, I'm like, this woman just uprooted her life and moved here to be with me so I could chase my stupid dream of comedy. I have no money. Comedy probably made me 800 bucks last year. Like, and I'm sitting here looking down the barrel three days later of, and I told her, I was like, I can't do this. I'm like, if you want to leave, leave. I'm like, I wasn't able to make it three days and I'm in, I'm in, I'm in more debt than I've ever been in, in my life. Uh, but she's been great. And, and, but we were talking to her one time, we were talking about money and it's that anger thing. I was sitting there and she's like, well, well I try to live in like this. We'll figure it out. Work. You just, I just keep moving forward. Don't stop and look at the problems. And she's like, but how are you going to do this? And I'm like, I don't know. We were fighting and I was just like, I wanted to, she made me spaghetti and I wanted to throw this spaghetti. I was so, just so frustrated. Like, and there's nowhere. And I wanted to throw the plate of spaghetti against the wall. And I'm like, man, that is, you can't come back from that. The second that in your house, you can <laughs> No, even then that might, be. I don't know. Even in my house growing up, be like, who's cleaning that? <laughs> I thought you just broke a dish. <laughs> yeah, who's paying for that? Who's paying You're going to steal one from the diner See, now. mom? See, he's an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> I've been telling you. <laughs> but it was one of those of like, fuck. And that, those kind of moments make me realize of like, oh, I do have crazy anger and, you know, volatile emotions that I need to, uh, to work on. But um, all that, my stepdad was involved at a distance through all of that. Like while my dad was raising us and went, you know, co-parenting with my mom or whatever, my stepdad was there like kind of in the background. When we were really young, he was great. Like he, I mean, he was, dude, he was a fucking, he was from the suburbs, like born and raised in the suburbs when they was like country. So he was like a hick, like cowboy boots. Dude, he, he drove, he built and drove stock cars. No shit. Uh, as like a hobby with like his hillbilly boys where like that was their weekend. They'd go down and they had all their money with a tinker and then he'd go race and crash right away and be like, ah, next week we're going to get him. <laughs> that motherfucker never finished a race. <laughs> <laughs> never. Dude smoked Winston's, drank Coors Lights, like the cool, and he'd be like, oh, I got a boat. He's like, I have a wave runner. Because he was like this, he was like, he was making some money and he was a single guy, no kids. He's calling a wave runner a boat? Or No, he had a boat <laughs> and a wave runner. Say, let's... <laughs> Let's hold on. Sorry. It's a two seater. Let's pump the bird. <laughs> Crab it off the, some crabbing boat. off the back yeah. of the Kawasaki. <laughs> just fish all the <laughs> drive, drive. Uh, but um, he was great. He was really great. He he was like you know, if my mom was Jordan, he was Pippin. He was like in the back, not in the limelight. Was like I'll step in when I need to step in. He very rarely ever tried to uh like discipline us like he really knew his role in that of like because he knew like if we would fight back or something it could get to my day he knew i'm not making this any messier than it already is Mm -hmm. they have a pretty good working system i'll fall back and you know i'm just here to Play with Denise. Yes, I'm just yes. I'm just I'm Denise's Denise. man. I'm, I'm Denise's new husband. I'm Denise's husband. new husband. <laughs> That's all. I and have. I'm That's hanging out role. here. All that <laughs> other mess with these dirtbag kids. Let them figure that out with their. I'll be in Charlotte. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll be, I'll, 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 be, I'll be in Charlotte. <laughs> Cars are running this weekend. We're going to be down there in Flemington. Yeah, yeah. We're going to Flemington, Flemington, New Jersey. That's where he would race. Flemington, New Jersey. Man. <laughs> um. But he was great. Loved him. He was fantastic all through uh, all through childhood. Then uh, we once I got a little older, we would bump heads a little more kind of thing. And it was also because like me and my brother were fucking idiots, you know, and it's like, oh, fuck, you know, fuck you. And like we were so close to my dad. We're like, yeah, you're not my dad. And we never said that, but it was kind of like sometimes like, shut the fuck out, get out of here. Like, I'm doing whatever the fuck I want to do type thing. Um. And then he got sick. They they were like cowboys. Dude, he was like, you couldn't fucking kill the, the, him and his brothers and his dad. They had like cancer, like between three of them, like 15 times. No. Dude, he got diagnosed with stage 4B lung cancer. What is that? There's a That's B like, on it? Well, it's I've like you're even, right at five. I've never you're even right heard five. of a letter on they, it. They were like, you can, there's nothing we can do. It's a wrap. It's, there's genuinely nothing we can do. We're like, fuck. And this was... Seven years ago, something like that. <clears throat> We're like, what the fuck, man? This is crazy. And then it just healed itself. 
It just, the- I swear to God, dude, it just, all the cancer just died. Like, he did radiation and shit, like, whatever. But, like, they were like, we'll try. But, like, we're really just buying some time here. This is inoperable. There's nothing we can do. And he lived. And it just, one day, the doctor went in and there was like, he's like, it's all just now scar tissue. Like, it's, there's no cancer left in your lungs. It's just scar tissue. I've never heard anything like that either. Nobody did. Nobody did. We were like, what the fuck? We're like, what the fuck is this? <clears throat> so then he gets back on the heaters, obviously. Like, he feels he's no, a fucking bionic dude, man, dude. Oh, he, no. he can't hold this guy yeah. back. No. What are you talking about? <laughs> he's back on the heaters. And this is when it's like, we're, uh, we're smoking. I'm smoking. So we're at family parties. And like, at that point, my mom's like, everybody's done fucking smoking. You know, no more smoking. But then it's like, because of him, she's like, I might, you know, he's, I'm not going. It was, was she smoking as well? No, no, no. But like my, me, my brother and my, and my stepdad were, and he's like, she, it was bad. It was raw. Like he was doom and gloom. The, the radiation was the hair. It's, you know, I mean, it's, I'll, you know, it's a lot of people know it's not a pretty fucking scene, but he weathered the storm. So then we're like, all right, we're, you know. He starts smoking some. We're smoking. We're like hiding behind cars and shit at family parties. Fucking, oh, here she comes. Fucking here hold these come. for me. Yeah, like, yeah. you know what I mean? Real fucking. And like, you feel bad. I'm like, but it's also like, it was this weird way we bonded. You know what I mean? We'd be at a family party and you're like, we didn't talk that much. It was a very quiet dude, like head down, just did his own thing. So like, you'd make eyes with him at the at the party. Like, hey, and I'm like, yeah, let's go. And I'm like, I'm, you know, it was like the way I we bonded and talked. And you would get some conversation of like house comedy. Like that's when we, so I felt bad. I'm like, man, I'm giving this guy fucking cigs. She would get smoke breaks with him. Yeah, get smoke breaks with him. Get to learn more about him yes, and vice that was, versa. That was the All extent right. of our real like communication and dialogue was over cigs and beer. And then um, then he had some liver issues like two years ago, you know, due to just smoking and drinking a lot. Uh, beat that. Beat that. The doctor's like, yeah, these numbers are insane that you're reporting back. Like, they were like, whatever the, the stat was, it was like, most people are a 10, you're a 1. Wow. And then it was like, oh, now you're a 9, you're an, you're an 11. And it was like, he was back to normal thing. It was like, doom and gloom. It was like, that was it, again. And we're like, he can't fucking kill this guy. And then he got, can't, he got lung cancer again, Damn. right after that. And was like, ready to fight it. And was like, I'm going, you know, because he, he couldn't drive. So he made the choice not to fight it? No, he's like, I'm fighting oh, it. He did. He's okay. like, I'm strapped in. He's like, let's fucking go. Like, you can't you can't get me. We're doing this. And this was in the beginning. Of, this was the end of last year. Yeah. How old was he? He was young, man. He uh, fucking 50, in his 50s, 58, yeah. maybe something like that. Young. He was younger than my mom. And uh, he was like, I'm ready. And like he, cause he couldn't drive afterwards. So we had to get him, like he was like going to take Uber. Like he got a car service of like, okay. Um, cause he had to drive like 90 minutes or something. My mom's like, I can't make it every day. And he didn't want another burden on my mom. So he's like, I got this car service. that's going to drive me Monday, Wednesday, and Friday back and forth, whatever, whatever. Um, and then right before he just woke up in the middle of the night, coughing bad, and then passed at the house, like pretty, that same night? Yeah. They were oh, like, really? yeah, yeah. My mom called 911. Oh, man. The cops had come, you know, the EMS came and they worked on them there for a little bit and just didn't, couldn't get them. Um, so he he passed and then just like, like as, as fucking stupid as we are, we're at his, for his luncheon. Like we go for the, the funeral and then we go to like the luncheon to his favorite bar. Like, you know what I mean? This is how we're going to honor this guy who's, you know, essentially, you know, smoked and drank himself. They don't do the Irish. No, no. Okay. I want, on I the want pool that table. though. Do you? I want that. Yeah. yeah. I want to be on a pool table. Somewhere. I learned about that from the wire when they yes. had a guy. Yeah, yeah. That, I, I didn't know. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, a, yeah. But that is a thing. That's, that's a, a traditional thing. I, I think cops do. I think they used to do oh, it back in the day. Thing. Yeah. Oh, it's like okay. an Irish. I don't think nobody does it anymore. I don't think you're allowed Probably. to just have a body. <laughs> say a he wouldn't have to walk in until everybody day. shows up. Yeah. <laughs> He's a put him on top of the Bud Lights. <laughs> Nobody's drinking them anymore. <laughs> um, and then, dude, so we're there, and I'm like, we're there, and his favorite, he loved uh, Absolute and Tonic, big vodka tonic guy. So we're doing shots of Absolute to this guy. Who like drinking? Obviously, I think in the end got him. And I'm like, the, we are idiots. Like it's we're a, sitting you're here drinking 
gasoline yeah, to kill well, them. Again, yeah. I'm like, what are we doing? I'm like, you smoking too? Oh, crank, dude, cranking heaters. <laughs> we were smoking so many, we had my wife go on a cig run. <laughs> Dude, it was we're idiot. Like we can't. I'm like, I stepped outside myself. I'm like, what the fuck are we doing here? But I don't know. It's like there's something to that life of like, this is what we enjoy. This is what we do. This is who we are. And like, it is what it is. And that's you know, I don't know. It's a very like uh, sad but romantic thing of like, this is I, I shared a lot of times with him like this, mm-hmm. and this is how we bonded, whether right or wrong. But it's like this is what it was, and. This is how we're celebrating his passing or whatever. So it was like, it was just this weird thing. I'm like, we're sitting here doing the thing that fucking got this motherfucker. And we're like celebrating twice. twice and we're like celebrating. Like, you know, I got, we got shots of absolute and fucking Bernie's going in the hands. But it was, uh, it was tough. But it's also like one of those things to have like, it's made our family closer a little bit now that like, you know, it's like I, I come back now that my mom you know, now that he's passed, it's like I come back and see my mom a lot more. We're doing a lot more stuff as a family. That's Just because, nice. like, it, it shook me of, like, fuck. You know, this is, you know, it just made things more real of, like, uh, how much time do you have left with all these people? And it's like, do I, I, like, we work very hard. And it's, you know, it's not, I'm not laying bricks or anything. But it's like, it's, uh, you know, it's a very hectic schedule, comedy. And you, you you give up a lot of time to places and stuff like that. And I've gotten way better of going, like. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Like, I'm not putting in for spots or like, I'm not doing this. And yep. I want my day. I want, you know, I'm going down to have lunch with my family. Yep. And like, really making Go that effort. You. Yeah. And it's like, because it's like, I don't want to look back in, you know, fucking 15 years and be like, I was doing, because I had like a 1 a.m. spot. I decided not to go to the, the family party or something like that. So I'm like. And it's that weird thing is like, you try in comedy, you do everything. I'll take everything I'm asking to do everything. I'll do whatever you have. Does it pay no money? I'm on anything. I'm in, I'm in. And now I'm like, oh, fuck that. Like, I don't, <clears throat> I don't, you know, not that I don't care, but it's like, it shift my focus a lot. So it's been, the past year has been a, uh, you know, figuring stuff out type thing in good. a good way, in a good way. And what about you and your brother? You guys? We're chilling, man. We're, we're better than we've ever been, honestly. Like, I never think you should work with family. I've I've watched it just destroy families. Uh, my, you know, and it's just not, it never works. And like, I have a bit about it, but it's like, yeah, when the family's good, like if your family owns fucking, you know, Apple, great. Yeah, I'm sure it's fun because you're splitting up billions of dollars. When you're like a bricklayer or a, you're painting houses and money's tight and no one really knows how to run a business and you're like, it's a fuck, it's it's a nightmare, especially in those blue collar families Money's always tight. Always. All, home improvement Someone's companies. getting laid off. Money's tight. I mean, when my dad died, I didn't even know uh, about living will and a trust or oh, no, that's any all. of that. And they're like, did you have any? Like, like no. My no. dad was 42. I don't think Damn. he thought he was going to die. Die, yeah. But still. So I went and made sure that I got that shit done yeah. for my daughter. Mm-hmm. Uh, no life insurance, you know. Mm-hmm. I made sure we got the life sure. insurance, that kind of shit. Mm-hmm. Um, that's how it's affected me. Like- I still have that blue collar, uh, blue collar mentality and work hustle, but I want to make sure I'm doing that shit in the white collar world. Yeah, you ha- no, that's so true. It's you know like what I'm you, saying? You need apply to apply that hustle and that work ethic to this yes, fucking yes. thing over here. Don't stay here. That's why, and like that's what we do. Like we work, like you know, we do four episodes a week. We yeah. tour like crazy. We guest on a shit ton of pot. Like where it's is. We apply that blue collar. Like I mean, when I was working with my family, I was digging ditches. Like I was literally. In I was digging six foot holes like that was part of my job because it was like, well, we can't hire somebody. I, you know, I was working in the office during the day and then at night we were digging ditches. So it's like, yeah, just go worry. It's like that thing. You're just digging. They just work. Go, go, go. But I'm not digging ditches. Now we're doing, you know, a white collar industry. I used to have so many people in high school and college want me to do stuff. I'm like, I have to work. And they would get so mad. Like mm-hmm. You're always working. I'm like. You have parents. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Have, I don't have any. Uh, yeah, I, I got to do this. Fuck yeah. work. I need clothes, dude. Are you going to give me the money to mm-hmm. get by today? Yeah. All right, then I'm going to fucking have to go yeah. to work. Yeah. yeah. It is uh, it is a very, like, feast or famine thing I've learned of, like, that blue-collar lifestyle. The money comes in, and most people aren't. Like, I've, I've had friends. Like, I grew up in, like, a pretty affluent area because, like, they, they had that money for, like, a year 
bought the place. And then that was my mom was like, we're keeping this fucking place. I don't care what bills are behind. Like we're keeping the fucking mortgage. And my dad would pay child support to my mom and that money would just go. She's like, that's paying the mortgage. Like all that shit, everything else you just put on a credit card. Um, and like I was, it was weird because like I was friends with the blue collar workers. They would be like all my friends' dads owned a construction company or a landscaping company or right. like did like auto sales or something like that. Somebody's got a rollback, yeah, in exactly. the mix, exactly yes, for sure. Yeah. And all like then, but we were like there was all like the it was like doctors and lawyers, kids, and you're like oh like we just culturally not that like we were friends with them and stuff but it was like we i bonded with the other kids who's and everybody's money was up and down houses getting foreclosed on where you know one year they're putting on an addition the next year they're taking the fucking house away <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like dude how did you not see that coming yeah. one year you know what like dude like nobody was planning six months ahead of like they go oh it's like sports stars they're like oh, i made a million dollars this year i'm gonna make a million dollars for the rest of my life you're like, nah, dude, you got five years to make that money. Yeah. And you got to make it last 30 years. That's right. But uh, that's what, I, you know, I'm trying to do now. But I'm I'm so hardwired to make bad decisions financially. Like, I just, you know, I'm just hardwired to do it. Do you have a business manager? No. You got to get a business manager. I know. Manager. I had nothing. We just, we're just running and gunning, dude. It's yeah. somewhere, I'm, I mean, this is the first year my taxes are paid. Like, I'm like. I, and I still got money left over. I'm like, yo, we're chilling. <laughs> yeah, we're chilling, yeah, dude. I'm the smartest yeah, guy bro. in the world. Yeah. But yeah, it's like I'm trying to learn from the the flaws of of the people before me. But I don't know. I will, we'll see what happens. Dude, you're doing great. And <laughs> Thank this is you. A, this is a great episode. Thank you, man. Thank you for doing this. And mm-hmm. this is your first time here. I ask everybody their first time. After everything we've talked about today, advice you would give to 16 year old Kevin Ryan. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, I would say let go. And a lot of anxiety is, you know, just worry. I would worry and worry and worry and worry. And it's like when you're in your teens, you think that's the most thing. You're like, I don't want to turn 20. I don't want to be in my 20. I don't want to graduate college. I want these years to last forever. And it's like, I'm 37 and these are the best years of my life. You yep. know what I mean? Like, I did yep. love all those times and the kids and mm-hmm. uh, being all that stuff. Like, I loved the shit out of that. And there's so many great moments. But, like, I would be like, ah, fuck, we're going to be 20. And then we got to get jobs. And then we got to do this and do that. And it's like, I held it too tight. And I maybe not enjoy it. Just fucking relax. Things will fall into place at some time. And if they don't, they don't. And it, that's just is what it is type thing. Just acceptance a little bit. Yeah. I love it. Thank you. Thank you, brother. It's been a pleasure to have one of Denise's boys. (laughs) Really has. Um, Free estimates. (laughs) We ain't coming back. (laughs) Um, Plug and promote everything Uh, again. Yeah. uh, At Kevin Ryan Comedy on all social media. Our live shows are a very good time. It's a very fun live show. Me and Foley both co-headline. Then we play AYG with the crowd. Um, the podcast, we've had you twice. We've had so many people. Oh, we've had Louie, yeah. Tom Segura, Bird a bunch, Norman, ever, ever, whoever, uh, Shane Gillis. Check them out. It's a good time. Hope you like it. Great. Uh, as always, RyanSickler.com. Ryan Sickler on all social media. Come see me on tour. Tickets on my website. We'll talk to you all next week.